Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I would like to share with you an honest, unbiased review of the Specialized Crux Comp. After testing it out on gravel roads and mixed surface rides, long epic adventure rides, gravel races, and I would like to share with you why I love this bike and why it would be 100% the bike I would choose to keep if I only had to have one bike for all my rides or if I had zero bikes and I was buying my first one. To say I love this bike would be an understatement. The amount of joy, fitness, fun and adventure it has given me in just a couple of months is huge. Let me share with you the configuration, upgrades and reasons why I decided to buy it. Disclaimer, I bought this bike with my own money, with a discount code from Milky Way shop, but the agreement was more on promoting the online experience, not about the bike. So the views in this video are 100% my own and neither the shop nor Specialized have seen this video before it being posted. This is going to be a real talk review, just like I made for the Revolt last year, with the positives and blasting this bike for the negatives, which trust me, there are. Let's get to it. The Specialized Crux is a super lightweight and reactive gravel bike. This is the base model, the Crux Comp. Frame is a super light Fact 10 carbon frame, weighing in at 825 grams, and the fork weighing in at 400 grams. The frame is incredibly light, and this can be felt straight away. The group set is a SRAM rival one by setup with hydraulic disc brakes. It is a mechanical group set. The handlebars are Specialized Adventure with a Supercats bar tape, and the seat post is a standard 27.2 Roval seat post. The saddle is a Specialized Power Comp. This stock build comes with a pair of unbranded wheels and formula hubs. I switched out these wheels immediately to get an even lighter bike. The wheels weighed in at a whopping 2,050 grams. The wheels I switched to are Fulcrum Rapid Red aluminum wheels. Light and made of aluminum, so they can be treated pretty ruggedly. I got these wheels switching out the standard HG hub and switching to a SRAM XD hub. With the XD hub now mounted, I then switched the stock cassette to a Garbarook wide range 1050 cassette and a Garbarook cage extender for the rear derailleur. This setup for the type of riding I do is vital. It allows to have a range of gearing that is comparable to most two by setups, but with a one by. The cassette is also super light, weighing in at around 320 grams, and that is really light. This is even lighter than any Shimano 1146 cassette, which would weigh around 450 grams. I would advise anyone to apply this modification if you do a lot of climbing and have a one by setup. Tires are the stock 700 by 38C Specialized Pathfinder Pro in a tubeless setup. The frame can clear up to a pretty massive 47C tires if you need to go on more rugged adventures. That is a lot of tire clearance, one of the key aspects of this bike. I bought the Crux because during the course of the last 20 months, I realized that I was really longing for more adventure. I wanted to go off-road more, but I still wanted to train insane, like with a road bike. So my dream bike was kind of like taking its form. It was supposed to be a performance-driven, lightweight bike, reactive, stiff, but unbound from being only on tarmac. My dream bike would be capable of handling different terrains, allowing for unlimited exploration, adventure, and fun. I started doing a ton of research on if such a bike, first of all, existed. And it seemed like the gravel bikes and the gravel world were all geared more towards people riding with flannel shirts, bikepacking, with very relaxed geometries on the bikes with open angles to allow for a more comfortable riding experience and for bikepacking. Even the racing gravel bikes still were a bit too clunky and relaxed. They were different from what I was looking for. I did find some bikes that were kind of close to my dream bikes and I ended up getting the Crux. It took me a while to decide to get the Crux because there was one huge factor holding you back and that was the fact that it could not run a two by mechanical setup, which I thought to me was an absolutely essential thing. I refused the idea that a bike could have only a one by setup it seemed too limiting to me. I thought, they don't put one by setups on road bikes. Why would I get a bike that I would like to use both for road and gravel, but that can't take a two by setup like road bikes? Then videos started popping up of cycling influencers and brands building road bikes in a one by setup. And that got me thinking that it might be a viable option. Then I went to shoot a video at Badlands, a gravel ultra distance race, a dream of mine to do. And I saw first person what setups everybody was running for such a grueling event. And lo and behold, literally almost everyone was running a one by setup. And I thought if the most accomplished and hardcore gravel racers were using a one by setup, I thought that would be a good enough option for me. And I was right. I love the one by setup. The SRAM rival group set is nothing to write home about, but it gets the job done. The front chain ring comes stock with a 40 tooth chain ring. 
now that we talk about components, I would like to talk to you about the standout feature of this bike, and it is the weight. This bike is light. This bike is as light as a road bike. This is a pretty crazy feeling. And whenever I'm out on a ride with friends and I tell them to pick it up and feel how light it is, they literally cannot believe it because it looks really rugged with the chunky tires. I was on a giant Revolt 2, which weighs like a brick compared to this bike and is very sluggish in sprints, etc. I wanted a road bike with chunky wheels, something that would allow me to rip roads, climbs and trails with that reactive and nimble feeling that a road bike allows. I wanted this bike to be my main training tool and weight was a key factor. And the Crux is the lightest gravel bike on the market at the moment. And this is not just something that they say. When you receive this bike, you lift it up. And trust me, I've been around a lot of other gravel bikes. This bike is extremely light. With that simple modification of switching out wheels and cassette, I couldn't have been more stoked with how it came out. The bike is extremely light, reactive, and climbs way better than my, albeit entry-level carbon road bike, a Cube GTC. I don't have a scale, but I would put it at around eight kilograms in this basic comp configuration, just with that modification in the wheels and cassette. So the weight is a critical factor and it is absolutely amazing to just handle this bike. Other standout components are, well, the saddle is amazing. To my disbelief, I never thought I could like a saddle this much. The power comp saddles is really great. And the other standout components are the Pathfinder Pro tires. After trying a wide variety of tires, Victoria and Pirelli, these are the first that feel really awesome and shred both road and gravel. On the road, they are super fast and roll really well. Off-road, they are fairly grippy and get the job done. The keyword is versatility. For easy gravel and versatility, I believe they are unbeatable. I really cannot tell the difference from having a road bike when I'm on the road with these 38C tires because they have a strip in the middle, which is smooth and rolls really well on tarmac. So if you're looking for mixed surface rides with gravel and road, these tires, I believe, are an awesome choice. Now let's see some aspects related to actual riding. I tested this bike riding for about three months, logging 2000 kilometers and more than 100 hours in the saddle. Something really funny and telling happened since I received it. I have not ridden my road bike even once, not even a single kilometer. The Crux is the only bike that I ride these days. And that is because of the handling. I was looking for the distinct mega reactive handling of a road bike. I wanted that handling of a light as a feather climbing bike. And the Crux is just that. The acceleration is instant. Getting out of the saddle and climbing feels effortless. This bike feels like it's made to climb. And even with the wider tires, it rides like a road bike. Terrain-wise, I tested this bike, I believe, to its limits. Starting out on standard gravel roads, it feels like flying. It really thrives and performs great on non-technical gravel roads and climbs, providing a lively ride and not being at all uncomfortable. With a tubeless tire setup, it is really nice to ride off-road. On climbs, the response is snappy and reactive, both on gravel and road. On roads, it feels exactly like a road bike. And I mean exactly. And this is with 700 by 38 c tires. I can only imagine if I put on a set of carbon road wheels with 700 by 30 c tubeless tires on, it will become even lighter and better performing on road. But for the moment, I'm keeping the 38 c tires on because I find they offer a really extreme versatility with the least amount of compromise, both off-road and on-road. Being very reactive, it is also nice to ride on single tracks, provided they are not too technical with exposed rocks, etc. Where it starts to not perform anymore is in two situations. Firstly, on really rugged terrain. The limit I found was on La Via del Sale, a mountain bike route in the Italian Alps. Here, the surfaces really needed and wanted a front suspension system. In some spots, I dare say even a full suspension system. And the crux would not cut it, even just for the riding position. A riser bar with suspension would have been a better choice for this ride. Or at least 45C tires to absorb some of the vibrations from all the rocks, etc. It's not that the route can't be done with this bike, it's just that it will not be as fun as doing it with a mountain bike. If I could go back and do this ride, I would slap on some 47C tires with very low pressure, or even a 650B set of wheels with 2.1 tires, and at least double bar tape to absorb impact on the wrists. The other situation in which I find that the Crux lacks is off-road downhills when going full gas. Here the bike is fairly unstable compared, for example, to the giant Revolt. On road descents, it's great. Off-road, it lacks a bit of stability. But in my experience, and for the type of riding that I do, it is a minor deal. Mostly because my riding is not incented around going fast downhill, but more about climbing hard.
One absolutely essential thing I have to mention is the gearing choice I put on, because I believe it is a must to unlock the full potential of this bike. 40 tooth in the front and 1050 in the back. 40 10 is enough to charge at above 40 kilometers per hour, which makes it so I can easily ride with friends even on road bikes. And 40 50 allows me to ride up even the steepest grades with a relatively high cadence. Preserving my legs if need be, like on a long ride, like 200 kilometers. This gearing was achieved, as I stated earlier, by putting on a lightweight Gaborok cassette and a Gaborok cage extender on the SRAM rival Dorado. If I were to buy a Crux today, I would redo this custom mod. Maybe even going as far as putting a 38 in the front chainring and putting a 950 in the back. I would use this bike for gravel racing, given its dynamic and reactive spirit. It's made to go fast, be it for 100k or 1000k. I believe it is very close to being the perfect bike for fast 7 to 12 hour efforts, with a great amount of reactiveness combined with the capacity to rip any terrain that gets thrown under it. I would and will use this bike for structured daily training. My overall biggest goal for this year is still in the Ironman distance space. For Ironman training, I perform a ton of sessions on the road bike, climbing up hills. With the Crux, I can easily go out, perform my intervals or tempo blocks on the road or off-road, exactly like having a road bike, if not better. I usually do the structured parts of the training just when I go out of the door, up climbs in the area. With the Crux, when the structured part is over, coolest thing is I can finish the ride hitting some single track or back roads and explore. That, in my experience, is awesome to add in some extra fun and motivation to structured training, which can get kind of boring, but is extremely beneficial. Another situation in which I would buy this bike is if I had zero bikes and I had to purchase my first one. It would be the Crux. It is so versatile. I would use it as road, gravel, and hell, it could even perform in a 70.3 distance race with aero bar extensions. It would not be out of place there, trust me. It would certainly perform better than the road bike that I used in my first 70.3 in Italy. No doubt about that. So if you're looking for your first bike and you want the most bang for your buck, versatility and fun, this is the bike that does the job. This bike will give you so much fun and versatility, you'll be hooked on cycling forever. What I wouldn't use this bike for? Well, honestly, I would not use this bike for multi-day bikepacking trips. Or, I mean, I would, but if my main thing was bikepacking, there might be other bikes that are better suited for the job. With rack mounts, two by setup, you name it. So many other different things that cater to bikepacking. And here comes the biggest problem that I can see with this bike. And I'm gonna slam this bike forever for this no two by mechanical setup is possible. This is the biggest thing that really pisses me off about this bike because one by works great, but having the option to run a mechanical two by would very simply make this the definitive bike for all usage types. You could also choose to ride it in crits at that point. So a two by would be an awesome add-on and I truly cannot understand why Specialized hasn't put in a two by setup. Two by can be run but only electronic, which in my opinion if you're doing some rugged rides with water crossings, mud and basically gravel stuff, mechanical is simply just more reliable. No batteries, no electrical stuff that can go wrong. So that is definitely the biggest thing that I'm slamming this bike for. The biggest negative is no two by mechanical setup possible. Here we'll answer a couple of questions that have always popped up. Why don't you just get a cyclocross bike? I would say, go for it, get a cyclocross bike. The Crux is a cyclocross bike in origin, but you need to find one that holds up to 47C tires. Trust me, that is important. The bigger the tire size you can run, the more versatility the bike can give. Why not get a mountain bike if you want off-road? In my experience, a bike like the Crux is way more suited for versatile all-road riding training and generally being versatile. Being light, reactive and capable of doing ultra distances with zero added effort. Doing a 200 kilometer mixed surface ride with maybe long tarmac sections and smooth flat gravel sections, a mountain bike with a front suspension system would literally be like four kilograms heavier and will take a massive toll on our ability to do these rides and distances in a fast and productive way. 80 to 200 kilometer plus long mixed surface rides on the Crux are where it absolutely shines. This bike was made to do these distances and rides. If you have a road background and enjoy doing non-technical rides, the Crux is in my opinion a mega solid choice. Why not just use an endurance road bike with 38C tires? Because in my opinion 38C is where gravel starts, it is the bare minimum clearance. So if you want to explore more you will want to put in those 40, 42 or even 45C tires or 650B wheels with wider tires. 
trust me. And the fact that the Crux handles and reacts like a road bike, even with bigger tires, makes it a better choice in my opinion. The final section is who would I recommend this bike to? This bike is perfect fit for anyone who wants to rip gravel, roads, trails and single track going fast. I would define the rider of this bike as a freestyle soul rider who wants to go out of the house and let their higher mind decide if they want to ride roads or gravel without having to stick to any of the two and without any performance sacrifice. Do what you want to do in any given moment while getting fit. Heading out with this bike is a really amazing feeling guys. I wish I could lend you the bike to try and feel it for yourselves like I've done with many of my friends in Turin and they were all blown away by this bike. Even just when I tell friends to pick up the bike or feel its weight, they can't believe it. They are used to seeing these super clunky, heavy gravel bikes and holding the crux in their hands is an amazing feeling that I believe opens up their perception of what is possible. Another person who I would recommend this bike to is anyone who's riding on roads, enjoys riding road bikes, but is starting to feel stuck. Stuck and is not enjoying just riding on that tarmac anymore. If you long for more adventure, if you long for more exploring, but you still want to maintain that fitness, that hard charging, that, that driven structured training protocol, the Crux is an awesome bike for you guys. Another category of rider who this bike is perfect fit for is in my opinion and why I'm putting up this video as a versatile weapon for triathletes, adventure athletes, multi-sport and Ironman athletes. This is a new breed of recreational athletes stemming from the likes of pros like Heather Jackson, people who train insane volume but who want to experience adventure and not be limited by having to be on roads. The fundamental thing to understand is that triathlon training and long distance Ironman training is power, heart rate and TSS based. With the crux, all that training can be accomplished perfectly. Intervals, tempo rides, long rides, both on road and on gravel, feel like heading out on a road bike. And the best part is we can perform all this training in more secluded, fun, beautiful and safe places. Personally, there's gonna be no more intervals on dodgy highways for me. Riding on roads is getting more and more dangerous by the second. So I personally am done with that. For sizing, I am 190 centimeters tall and I run a saddle height of 89.5 centimeters. And the crux I got is a size 58 and it is perfect. It feels like it's made for me, both on short and long rides. And I believe a 60 would have definitely been too big and a 56 would have been too small for long rides. I still currently have a couple of spaces on the stem and I think I will try and lower it at least by one or two for a slightly more slammed setup. But so far it's really perfect. I got the bike and I literally didn't change anything from how it was set up in the box. Sometimes you just get lucky and things just click straight away. And with the crux, this was the case, fortunately. I bought this bike online, so there was no trying it out. But having already owned and ridden multiple and very different setups, I managed to cross-check the geometry, dimensions, etc., to ensure that it was as close to a perfect fit as possible. Another thing to bear in mind is if you get a Crux, make sure it is a 2022 model or more recent. The previous Crux versions are great bikes, but they only allow to fit up to 38 C tires in the back, which in my opinion is extremely limiting if you want to do any real hardcore riding. Personally, I would not recommend previous models of the Crux to anyone. Another final thing I would like to mention is this bike is not sturdy. The construction is made to be as light as possible. So it gives up some distinct, not super rugged vibes as far as construction goes. If I were to do a bike packing three week long trip in Laos, I wouldn't take this bike. Next upgrades that I'm gonna make that are gonna make this bike the definitive training tool is a power meter. This bike with a power meter will become my main bike for the vast majority of training this year. 40C tires, I'm gonna put on 40C tires because I think two millimeters extra will give a lot of benefit on the off-roads and will not create any complaints on the road compared to a 38C. If you're looking for a bike like this, other bikes that are similar are the Allied Echo, which is mega expensive, but the absolute ultimate quiver killer bike. It's mega light and has flip chips to adjust geometry for road and gravel. Another bike is the Ibis Haka MX. Okay price, but very hard to find. An Open Up and the Ventim GS1. Whatever bike you choose to get, in my opinion, if you want a quiver killer, a one bike to rule them all, the two most key things are weight and handling. It has to be light 
and it has to be responsive. This will allow it to be both a dope training tool and a tool to explore and go beyond our limits. As I said, I'm not here to sell you the Crux. This is not a sponsored video. I make this video because I want to share with you the experience of using such a new breed of bike. It's a crazy feeling. This bike is a great tool that can transform our training for the better by allowing for more adventure, exploring, and fitness to enter into our daily reality and mix and blend these aspects with improving performance and reaching epic goals, it can transform and enhance our life, in my opinion. Should you buy it now or wait? In my opinion, the market will be flooded with bikes like this from every brand in the next one to two years. It's just so much more fun to have a bike that can be so versatile without sacrificing anything compared to a road bike. I believe most brands will come out with endurance road bikes that can handle up to 40 C plus tires in the near future. So you could stay tuned and be on the lookout for that to come out. Okay gang, thanks for watching. That was my review of the Specialized Crux. I hope it gives you some insight on what to expect from a bike like this. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel for more videos like this. Get out there, shred, get fit, have fun, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.